The movie begins with the Hawkins family buying a robotic assistant, or synth, named Anita. Unknown to them, Anita is part of a group of sentient synths led by Leo, the son of the synth creator, David Elster. Someone illegally modified her, causing her to lose her memories. Joe, overhearing his wife Laura talk about someone named Tom, grows suspicious and ends up engaging in sexual activity with Anita using her adult options. Matilda, the eldest Hawkins daughter, notices Anita's odd behaviors and investigates the synth. In the process, she meets Leo online but hesitates to reunite him with Anita. Meanwhile, Niska, another sentient synth, kills a man in a brothel to escape. Detective Karen Voss, secretly a sentient synth, investigates the case. She struggles to hide her true nature from her partner, Detective P. Drummond. Drummond has moved in with her after his wife replaced him with a synth. With the assistance of Dr. George Milliken, Leo learns that their father left behind a program. However, he needs all the sentient synths to run it. After attacking humans and destroying synths in an anti-synth smash club, Niska escapes and reunites with Leo and her synth brother, Max. Leo reveals that their father did not destroy his work when he died. Instead, he hid the life program in them capable of creating more sentient synths. Niska smiles, thinking humans must accept them if they create more sentient synths. However, Max fears that humans will ignore them even more. Leo reassures Max that their father intended for them to find the program. Maya, whose real name is Anita, is the person they need to find. Leo, however, prohibits Niska from joining them due to her being wanted for murder. Despite her refusal, she eventually consents to remain with a human Leo recommends. Matilda then asks Anita about the name Maya, but Anita, the synth, denies any recognition of it. Upon their arrival, Joe and Laura assign the ironing task to Anita. Once she departs, Joe informs the children that Anita is an outdated and illegally modified synth, revealing their intent to return her. Sophie and Toby, their younger daughter and son, and Matilda resist, urging Anita to stay to discover her past identity. Joe finds himself in a dilemma as he secretly wishes to dispose of Anita to conceal his exploitative actions. Conversely, Laura aligns with the children, having developed an attachment to the synth. In a separate incident, Pete enters Karen's room while she recharges, but she manages to disconnect in time. Pete, thrilled, shows her a newspaper. Subsequently, Pete and Karen head to the station amid news of a leaked killer synth story. As detectives on the case, their chief calls them to manage the press and prevent further havoc by Niska. Karen, oblivious to Pete's involvement in the leak to withdraw charges against a previously assaulted reporter, inquires about the Smash Club incident at the chief's office. Dismissed by the chief as irrelevant, she decides to explore the case independently. Meanwhile, after sustaining an injury at the Smash Club, Niska takes a taxi to the address provided by Leo. She notices her side leaking. Upon arrival, she meets Dr. George Milliken, a pioneer in synth creation. Vera, is synth, detects Niska's true nature, which Niska initially denies. After Vera's departure, Niska confesses her creation by David Elster to George, revealing her sentient status akin to Max, who had previously visited with Leo. Concurrently, a determined Matilda recontacts Leo. Amidst her parents' dispute over Anita, she answers the door only to discover her father has already initiated the return process for the synth through the manufacturer. Risking it all, she swiftly drives with Anita to bring her to Leo. Upon seeing Anita again, Leo embraces her but Anita fails to recognize him or Max. Immediately, Leo and Matilda began cracking codes that might unlock Anita's consciousness, only for her to malfunction. Distraught, Leo gazes into Anita's eyes, longing for her to recall her identity, yet she does not. Meanwhile, George inquires how David created consciousness, leading Niska to reveal the use of 17,000 pages of unique code in her creation. She vents about being perceived as a threat by those aware of their existence. George acknowledges his initial fears but confesses to recognizing them as humankind's most remarkable invention upon seeing them. He recalls the message Leo showed him which Niska aggressively claims holds the future's key. Despite George noting David's design for Niska's combativeness, she insists her experiences have molded her evasively bypassing further inquiry into these experiences. In another part of the story, Pete notices that Simon, his wife's assistive synth, is nearing the end of its rental period. Meeting with Jill to discuss Simon's return, she resists, arguing her dependence on the synth during times when Pete was untrustworthy. Karen meets a man with a video of the attack at the Smash Club, where she identifies Niska. In a laboratory, Ha, a scientist hunting conscious synths, presents a recording of Niska and Leo's call to synth manufacturing executives. Under the impression that Leo Elster died as a boy, the executives listen as Hobbs suggests Leo is still alive. 
He claims David Elster successfully created true AI with more sentient synths existing. Upon learning the so-called life program requires all sentient synths, an executive orders Hob to eliminate Fred, the only sentient synth they have. Hob, however, appears conflicted about this order. Meanwhile, Liu abandons his efforts to recover Maya's memories. Overwhelmed with frustration and tearing up, he insists Matilda take Anita, whom they believe to be Maya, back home. Upon returning home, Matilda rushes to examine Anita's diagnostic law, convinced Maya's consciousness remains within. The arrival of Toby coincides with Matilda's discovery of the activation of adult options, leading her to confront Toby, which escalates into a family disturbance. Upon learning of the incident, Laura blames Toby, who refutes the allegations. The situation intensifies when Anita enters the room, prompting Toby to confess to an inappropriate act with Anita. Disappointed, Laura sends Toby to his room, delaying further discussion the following day. Joe, arriving home later, becomes privy to Toby's confession through Laura. Anxious, Joe proposes he should be the one to discuss the matter with Toby. The following day, a jogger stumbles upon Odie, George's old synth set free in the woods to evade recycling. The jogger's report to the police prompts Pete, who is familiar with Odie from previous malfunctions, to retrieve him. However, Pete finds Odie missing upon his arrival. In parallel, Leo experiences a dream of being underwater and thinking of Anita. Upon waking, Leo leaves with Max offering to accompany him. However, Leo insists on separating, asserting his inadequacy in caring for them despite Max's reminder of their family bond and his best efforts. Leo screams at Joe and storms off. At home, while Joe discusses Anita with Toby, the latter questions Joe's honesty. Joe's silence confirms Toby's suspicions, leading Toby to yell at Joe and storm out. Elsewhere, George assists Niska with her wound, and she unexpectedly twitches in pain. Niska argues that true consciousness requires the ability to experience suffering or pleasure, stating her lack of fear of death makes her stronger than humans. George, however, counters that the fear of death is essential to truly living. During a surprise visit from Pete, who is looking for Odie, Niska prepares to defend herself with scissors and hides. Vera's arrival distracts Pete just as he is about to discover Niska's hiding spot. Vera informs him about seeing Odie but omits Niska's presence, leading Pete to find George for not returning Odie as instructed and to sarcastically comment on George's connections and the news of a killer synth. Paul finds an anti-synth rally poster on his car upon returning. In the office, Karen surprises Pete by revealing that Niska is masquerading as a human and urges him to find her discreetly to avoid interference from Hop. At the anti-synth rally that night, the speaker claims synths are stripping humans of their purpose and safety. Meanwhile, Joe confesses to Laura his sexual encounter with Anita, rationalizing it by stating he is drunk, and Anita is merely a machine. This revelation angers Laura, leading her to understand Joe's eagerness to dispose of Anita. Joe then deflects the issue by accusing Laura of cheating on him with someone named Tom. Joe leaves after his wife, yelling and only taking an overnight bag, tells him to do so. In another scene, Niska stumbles upon a photo of Hop and David together, revealing their past collaboration. She also realizes that the newspapers have labeled her a killer synth. At the lab, Hob presents a chaired remnant to the executives, claiming it to be Fred and insisting it's a necessary measure for destruction. Contrary to Hob's public claim, Fred awakens in Hob's house the following day. Hob, intending to advance David's legacy, informs Fred about the life program embedded within all sentient synths, arguing that synths should be embraced rather than feared. In the meantime, Laura and her children reel from the unfolding events, with Sophie naively believing her father is on a business trip. Matilda's inquiry about Tom meets Laura's silence, leading Matilda to suspect her mother of infidelity. After spending the night elsewhere, Joe negotiates with his son on the way to school. Toby, impacted by his father's actions towards Anita, confronts Joe's perception of her as a robot, stressing their emotional attachment to her. Leo, plagued by visions of Maya, and the others, finally collapses. At George's place, Niska remains cautious, especially after George acknowledges her past violent act. Yet George, convinced of her affection for him despite her silence, discusses the importance of nonverbal human communication and recognizes Niska's underlying remorse for her actions, seeing through her facade of indifference. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and Odie stands at the door. At home, Toby, regretting his confrontation with his father, wishes everyone considered him the creep instead. His mother reassures him, stating that he is not to blame. Elsewhere, Fred harbors doubts about Hob, especially given the armed guards around the house. Hob clarifies that he will only trust Fred if Fred agrees to help him. Fred reminisces about a time his father presented him with an injured fox. 
After returning the fox to health and releasing it, he realizes that his father David underestimated him. This underestimation puzzled him until he concluded that human minds struggle to grasp the idea that their creations might surpass them. This revelation leads Fred to believe that Hop too, underestimates him. In a sudden move, Fred punches through a door, chokes a guard from the outside, seizes the guard's gun, and uses electromagnetic bullets to shoot Hop and his men, securing his escape. Meanwhile, George attempts to repair Odie, while Niska questions his affection for something incapable of love. George explains that Odie symbolizes the love he once shared with his wife, making him significant. Niska volunteers to repair Odie because George's hand trembles too much. Upon activating, Odie sees Niska smile briefly before she conceals it. In a different scene, Jill shares a moment of closeness with Simon yet finds the synth's predictability dull. Elsewhere, Laura's concern grows as Matilda has not returned home. Anita informs her that Matilda often spends time with Harun, prompting Laura to request a ride to his place. True enough, this is where they find Matilda. However, she doesn't want to go home until Laura tells her who Tom is. Elsewhere, Niska watches George care for Odie, so she asks if David ever cares about them. He comments that David only ever cared about his work. Even his son and his wife, Beatrice, weren't really interesting to him. Suddenly, George asks how old Niska is and she says she's nine. He laughs, saying that she's only a child. Niska laughs too, but then she falls silent, recalling that David didn't always treat her like one, though she kept that a secret from Leo and the others. George realizes that David used her for his sensual needs, so he sympathizes with Niska. He extends his hand, promising to offer any assistance he can. Niska accepts it, beginning to trust him slowly. Meanwhile, Laura brings Matilda to a park, where she shares a childhood photo of herself and her brother Tom. A car accident claimed Tom's life and Laura held herself accountable as she was supposed to be supervising him. Her mother never forgave her and Laura reveals that her mother is still alive and that she had recently visited her. Her mother expressed a wish that Laura had been the one to die, convinced Laura had let Tom die intentionally. This led Laura to sever ties with her mother and throughout her adult life, she claimed to be an only child with deceased parents. Matilda inquires why she still visits her mother, prompting Laura to explain that she feels she is losing Matilda. She hoped that by negotiating with her mother, she could also better understand her daughter. Matilda offers her reassurance, promising that Laura will never lose her. As they head home, Maya suddenly emerges from within Anita, taking strong breaths in the back seat, which makes Laura stop the car. Maya informs Matilda that Anita's personality is marked as a rogue coat aiming to erase her. She urges Matilda to convey to Leo that she remains present, he must search beyond her mental scope. Shortly after, Maya reverts to her standard synthetic behavior. When Laura questions who Leo is, Matilda explains that he was Anita's previous owner. Max encounters a memorial dedicated to a deceased boy. Among the tributes, he reads a message stating the boy is now under God's protection. Driven by a desperate desire to safeguard his siblings, Max is praying despite his skepticism towards God's existence. At that moment, Matilda bursts into their sanctuary, searching for Leo. Max discloses Leo's departure but mentions his probable location. In a separate scene, Laura reveals to Toby that Anita possesses consciousness, leaving him astonished. He questions if his father is aware, to which Laura responds negatively. Max then leads Matilda to a previously arranged meeting spot, where they stumble upon Leo, unconscious and near death. Max springs into action, attempting to resurrect Leo by connecting a cable to him which alarms Matilda and prompts her to seek an explanation. Simultaneously, Pete informs Karen of a cab driver who discovered blue blood in his vehicle and reported a passenger resembling Niska. Karen, thrilled by the news, playfully suggests she could kiss Pete for this information. However, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by a call from Jill, reporting that Simon is malfunctioning after undergoing modifications. Upon Pete's arrival to assist, Simon expresses frustration over his inability to fulfill his program role with Jill, who remains elusive. In response to Simon's behavior, Pete violently deactivates him using a crowbar. Once Simon powers down, Pete reassures Jill it's safe to emerge. Confronted with the damaged synth, Pete offers to compensate for a replacement. Jill, however, dismisses him, requesting he leave instead. Meanwhile, Karen proceeds to interview the cab driver Pete mentioned earlier. She confirms that she dropped off her passenger, Niska, at Queen's Park. Meanwhile, Toby approaches his father to unveil Anita's true identity, but Joe dismisses his claims. At their hideout, Leo wakes up to find Matilda, who informs him that Maya is still alive. She promises to reveal more only if Leo shares his story. Initially resistant, Max persuades Leo to trust Matilda. Consequently, Leo shares his digitally stored memories with Matilda, 
revealing his part synthetic nature, he recounts how his mother's mental illness led his father David to create a conscious synthetic caretaker named Maya for him, not as a lover but in a motherly role. David created more sentient synths, Fred, Niska, and Max. Tragically, Liu died at 13 when his mother abducted him and drove them into a lake from which Maya saved him, albeit too late. David integrated synthetic parts into his body to save Leo, bringing him closer to his synthetic siblings. Eventually David charged Leo with the care of his synthetic siblings and then took his own life after sending them away. Matilda empathizes with Leo and Max, deciding to help reunite them with Maya. On another front Joe seeks Laura's forgiveness again and inquires about Toby's alarming revelation regarding Anita. He suggests using the news of a killer synth and the potential search for Anita as reasons to dispose of her. Despite his efforts, Laura remains convinced of Anita's emotional capacity. When Matilda arrives with Leo and Max, claiming ownership of Maya, Joe is incensed. However, Laura demands he leave as Leo attempts to revive Maya. After hours, Leo struggles to succeed. Matilda cleverly suggests he coding her root code into pure sensory data, which Toby and Laura acknowledge with smiles. Upon trying this, Leo confirms she's right. Anita gasps suddenly, and upon Maya's return, she immediately wrapped Leo and Max in a joyful reunion hug, grateful for their safety. Maya took care of Leo's wound after expressing her thanks to the Hawkins family. Laura discovers they face pursuit from individuals who dislike their existence while the sentient sins yearn for freedom. Concerned for her family's safety, Laura hears Leo's reassurance that their pursuers are only interested in them. Despite plans to continually move and search for others like them, Laura offers assistance. Pete shares with Karen the recent complications concerning George, surprised to learn he's Dr. George Milliken from Queen's Park. Contemplating her next move, Karen considers revealing her synth identity to Pete just before he suggests sleeping for the night. Karen's unexpected compliment, hinting at a more intimate connection, leads to Pete succumbing to a kiss. After spending the night together, Karen announces her departure, unlikely to return, wanting Pete to remember he's her favorite person. Pete's confusion turns to shock as Karen exposes her charging port and blue blood, revealing her true nature and prompting Pete to flee in horror. Meanwhile, Leo and Max receive a call from Fred who's escaped without being tracked. Maya wants to come along as they prepare to retrieve him but Laura convinces her to stay until they return with Fred. Joe responds by contacting the authorities as Leo and Max depart. During their journey, a routine stop by a cop escalates as Leo spots Hop and his team approaching, prompting a hasty getaway. Eventually cornered and forced to abandon their vehicle, Max's dwindling power slows him down. At the bridge, Max chooses self-sacrifice to ensure Leo's escape, accepting his potential demise as proof of his lived experience and comforting himself with the thought of his family's eventual reunion as he plummets into the water. With no time to grieve, Leo flees the scene while Max embraces his fate with serenity. The movie ends.